Hello everybody and welcome to my first 2020 tutorial video of basic fishing. Last year I did not get to make much tutorial videos, so to start the year off, I decided to post my first tutorial video for the year and hopefully help some anglers out there who are taking advantage of the warm weather. In this video I'll be talking about how to use the most accessible and an effective bait that most fishermen use for their fishing, the green lipped mussel. I'll be talking about the basics on how to use a mussel bait in any situation from the wolf, rock and surf casting and which species to target using the mussel bait. Hope you learn a thing or two in this video and hope by the end of this video you'll get an idea on how to use a mussel in a more effective way. Mussels are one of the most basic baits to use. Unlike most baits, where you get them in freezers and tackle stores, mussels are easily available in almost every supermarket and they're just so easily accessible. You can easily find free bait on the rocks where you are allowed to collect shellfish. Good thing about mussel baits is that they are a prime food source for the fish especially in harbors where they can grow and even in rocky areas where it is their prime habitat. There is only one problem with mussels. They are incredibly soft and sometimes they can be a mess to hook onto and harder to stay on. For targeting small bait fish, this isn't an issue as you can cut up small pieces on your sabiki rig and most bait fish prefer soft small baits to eat. However, for surf casting or targeting bigger fish, this is a completely different story as you need the mussel bait to stay on your hook so that 1. It can survive when being casted out 2. Is that it is well presented for the fish to be interested in and 3. Is that it can last against the pickers and give enough time for the bigger fish to arrive. It usually doesn't take long before pickers destroy the mussel bait and having to rebait every 30 seconds can be a waste of time. Now in the next clip, I will be demonstrating on how to prepare your mussel bait in a more basic and effective way when targeting bigger fish. So this is my bait needle. Well, it's actually a wired fence, but I actually made it into a bait needle. Not the most reliable, but this will do the job. Got my bait elastic in here. Uh, my muscle base that I want to pre-tie. So here are all my muscle baits, and um, th this amount was pretty cheap. About they sell this for around three dollars fifty a kilo of packet thing. And um, I'm gonna use most of these for my um, fresh bait, which I want to use to target fish such as trevally or snapper. And these three, I'll cast these out because I want to use this for my. Um, Sabiki fishing. And the way that I open these mussels is that um, I like to use a thin knife. This is a pretty um, stiff but really thin knife. And what I actually do is I slip the knife through here. And I cut through the mussel. And that makes it easy to open up. I also like to cut the beer the beer off, whatever this is called, because I like, I like to um, make this tidy. And then I'll just um, slowly peel this around and remove the muscle from the shell. It is a bit finicky, which is why I'm doing this now instead of um, doing this at the spot. I would also like to note that the, sh the muscles are full of juices, so make sure you do this in an environment where you don't mind the bit of muscle smell because it will get a bit messy. But as you can see, I got myself a clean um, piece of the muscle, and I'll continue um, doing this until um, I have enough for bait, and I'll also demonstrate the tying on how I tie these bait. Another reason I don't crack the mussels is that um, 
the muscles, when it contracts, it makes it really hard to um, peel off and the shells are also very sharp to handle too. So this is the most um, recommended, I would recommend most people to deshell a muscle this way. A lot faster and a lot cleaner too. And a lot more safer at that. Especially if you don't want to cut yourself by the sharp shells. Well, look what I just found. <laughs> it's one of those um, pea crabs. I'm just trying to get that to focus. Yep, there we go. Yeah, as you can see, that's a pea crab right there. And um, it was um, a while ago that I learned that um, these crabs are actually a big pest to these um, mussels. They're no different to those beetles um, that crawl inside um, the fruits and steal and eat the seeds. And um, yeah, as you can see, um, <laughs> I don't know how these crabs even manage to survive in such a closed environment. Such a unique animal. But then again, this is a pest, so he's not going to have a happy ending. that a small juvenile pea crab that's the third one I've um, found but unlike these two which the conditions are in a bad way it seems this one hasn't that much damage to it and for, since <laughs> we have to um dispatch him quick but as you can see this is the this is the um what a muscle looks like when it's when it's got a pea crab inside the colors not as juicy whereas um this one here Nice and healthy, with a lot of fat around it. All right, so that that's all of them done, and that took a long time. It took a while, and I got these four leftovers for the sabiki fishing that I'll do um, when I go fishing. And the rest of these, I'll tie them up and get them ready for um, fishing for either trevally or any other species that'll be, around, that'll be around. Now I need a bait needle for this and a bait elastic, although bait cotton can also do the job. What you want to do is um, twist that through here, hold it up, and um, with the bait elastic, what you're basically trying to form is some form of sausage so that it's easy to hook on to the um the hook and i prefer tying my bait like this this way because it saves a lot of time so what you do here is just grip the um the elastic here and just tie it around and thanks to this bait needle it will help you to um hold it in shape you can see And basically I tie this enough until um, I'm confident that this won't fall off the hook because the last thing you want is um, this to fall off the hook especially when you're casting and another thing you should be very concerned about are pickers and that's done I do about two half hitches just for added security and just snap that off, easily slide off, and that's your bait right there. Now you can just hook it on, or just you can do like a two hook rig. And this is enough to um, catch Trevally and obviously the snapper, gurnard, and so many other species of fish that'll be out there. I'll demonstrate this again so that everyone can have a look. So, what I basically do is I hook it through here. And I'm just wrapping this around. Now, as I mentioned um, before, this will save you a lot of time because, you know, the moment you do this while you're fishing, you realize how much time you're wasting. And um, you really don't want to waste your time, especially when the fish are biting hard or when, when you're at the right time of the right time of the day and the fish are just going absolutely crazy 
but um as like all in fishing anything isn't predictable like anything can happen and so many things can also go wrong as well like the fish will not be biting and also the fish may not even be there but as I said it's always good to be fast and it's also good to be um, prepared as well as soon as you can because when the opportunity comes it won't last that long and look at that a juicy piece of muscle no true valley can resist this I'll tell you that I hope everyone had enjoyed watching this tutorial video and if you wish to look for more fishing videos please like and subscribe for more upcoming videos again thank you for watching and I hope to see you again very soon